Hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode about mythical gods of Underworld. This is episode 2. Underworld gods like Pluto, Veles, Ehrlich, and more are going to be fully explained. In previous episode, Lucifer and Satan, Shinigami, Hell, and more are explained. If you miss episode 1, check link in description. Thank you. Now let us begin episode 2. Pluto. Pluto, the mythical god of the Underworld has long captured the imaginations of people throughout history. Known by various names in different cultures, Pluto holds a significant place in mythology, representing the enigmatic and feared realm of the afterlife. The Mythological Origins of Pluto The origins of Pluto as a deity can be traced back to ancient Mesopotamian and Egyptian mythologies, where deities associated with the underworld held prominence. In Mesopotamia, for instance, the god Nurgle ruled the land of the dead, while in Egypt, Osiris was revered as the god of the afterlife. These early mythological figures laid the groundwork for the concept of a ruler of the underworld, a theme that later found expression in Greek and Roman mythologies. Pluto in Greek mythology In Greek mythology, Pluto is known as Hades, the brother of Zeus, Jupiter, and Poseidon, Neptune, and one of the principal Olympian gods. According to the Theogony attributed to the poet Hesiod, Hades was born to the titans Cronus, Saturn, and Rhea. When the Olympian gods, led by Zeus, overthrew the titans, Hades, Poseidon, and Zeus drew lots to divide the cosmos among themselves. Hades was granted rulership over the underworld, which became known as the realm of Hades. Pluto in Roman mythology In Roman mythology, Pluto is the equivalent of the Greek Hades, and he shares many of the same attributes and characteristics. Like his Greek counterpart, Pluto is one of the major deities in the Roman pantheon, often depicted as a stern and powerful figure. However, while Hades is primarily associated with the underworld, Pluto's domain extends to riches and wealth buried beneath the Earth's surface, reflecting the Roman reverence for wealth and abundance. The Underworld, Pluto's Realm the underworld, ruled by Pluto, is a mysterious and shadowy realm located beneath the Earth's surface. In Greek mythology, it is often described as a vast and gloomy place, inhabited by the souls of the dead who have passed from the world of the living. The entrance to the underworld is guarded by the three-headed dog Cerberus, who prevents the living from entering and the dead from escaping. Symbols and Attributes of Pluto Pluto is commonly depicted in art and literature with various symbols and attributes that represent his role as the god of the underworld. One of the most recognizable symbols associated with Pluto is the scepter or staff, which symbolizes his authority and power over the realm of the dead. He is also often depicted wearing a helm or cap that renders him invisible, reflecting his ability to move unseen between the worlds of the living and the dead. Pluto's role in mythological stories Pluto plays a central role in many mythological stories, often serving as a catalyst for conflict or transformation. One of the most famous myths involving Pluto is the abduction of Persephone, the daughter of the goddess Demeter. According to the myth, Pluto fell in love with Persephone and kidnapped her, taking her to the underworld to be his queen. Demeter, grief-stricken by the loss of her daughter, caused the earth to become barren until Zeus intervened and brokered a deal for Persephone's return. Worship and Rituals Dedicated to Pluto In ancient Greece and Rome, worship of Pluto slash Hades was an integral part of religious life, with various rituals and festivals dedicated to appeasing the god of the underworld. These rituals often involved offerings of food and drink, as well as sacrifices of animals, in an effort to gain Pluto's favor and ensure a peaceful passage to the afterlife. Temples and sanctuaries dedicated to Pluto were also constructed throughout the ancient world, serving as centers of religious worship and devotion. Pluto's influence on culture and literature. The myth of Pluto in the underworld has had a profound influence on culture and literature throughout history, inspiring countless works of art, literature, and music. From ancient epic poems like Homer's Odyssey to modern films and novels, the themes of death, transformation, and the afterlife continue to captivate audiences around the world. Pluto's role as the ruler of the underworld has also been explored in various religious and philosophical traditions, 
shaping our understanding of the human experience and the mysteries of life and death. Modern Interpretations and Legacy of Pluto In modern times, Pluto continues to hold a place in popular culture and imagination, albeit in different forms and interpretations. The discovery of the celestial body known as Pluto in 1930 further solidified its association with the underworld, as astronomers chose the name to reflect its distant and mysterious nature. In recent years, the demotion of Pluto from its status as a planet to that of a dwarf planet has sparked debate and controversy, highlighting the enduring fascination with this enigmatic deity and his realm. Baron Samadhi Baron Samadhi, often depicted as a skeletal figure adorned with a top hat, dark sunglasses, and a cigar, Baron Samadhi reigns over the realm of the dead, embodying both the morbid and the mischievous. The genesis of Baron Samadhi can be traced back to Haitian Vodou, a syncretic religion originating during the colonial period in the Caribbean. Vodou itself is a complex amalgamation of West African animism, indigenous Taino beliefs, and Catholicism, born out of the forced migration and cultural amalgamation of African slaves in the New World. Within the pantheon of Vodou Loa, spirits or deities, Baron Samadhi holds a distinctive role as the guardian of the cemetery and the ruler of the realm of the dead. His appellation, Baron, likely stems from the French word for Baron, reflecting the French colonial influence in Haiti, while Samadhi derives from the French word for Saturday, traditionally associated with death and burial. Baron Samadhi's lineage can be further traced to the religious customs of the Fon and Yu peoples of West Africa, particularly those of the Dahomey Kingdom, present-day Benin. In Dahomey religion, Gu, a deity associated with death, sexuality, and regeneration, shares striking similarities with Baron Samadhi, including mediation between the living and the dead and a proclivity for ribald humor and irreverent behavior. The transatlantic slave trade brought enslaved Africans to the Caribbean, carrying their religious beliefs with them. Through a process of syncretism with Catholicism, the dominant religion of the colonial powers, Gu evolved into Baron Samadhi, assimilating attributes of Catholic saints like Saint Martin Delaware Porres, patron saint of mixed-race individuals and social justice. This syncretism birthed a complex deity embodying African and European religious traditions, a testament to the resilience and adaptability of enslaved peoples amid oppression. Baron Samadhi's iconography depicts him as a dapper yet macabre figure in a black tailcoat, top hat, and dark glasses, often seen with a cigar clenched between his teeth. This imagery symbolizes his connection to both death and the fertile soil from which life emerges. Despite his unsettling appearance, Baron Samadhi exudes charm and wit, embodying the archetype of a trickster figure who challenges authority and societal norms. His association with the color black further underscores his dual symbolism of death and regeneration. In Vodou cosmology, death signifies not finality but a transition to another realm, where the deceased maintain influence over the living. Baron Samadhi mediates this liminal space, facilitating communication between life and death. Moreover, Baron Samadhi embodies fertility, portrayed alternately as Papa Ged, a youthful and virile figure. This manifestation, adorned in colorful attire with a jaunty cane, represents the patron saint of sexuality. Devotees seek his blessings for fertility, healing, and protection, attributing him with the power to cure illness and dispel malevolent spirits. In Vodou ceremonies, Baron Samadhi's presence is integral, serving as a psychopomp guiding souls to the afterlife and a protector of the cemetery and its inhabitants. His influence extends to blessing the living, particularly in matters of fertility and healing. Rituals and offerings, such as the Fate Ged, where devotees honor the spirits of the dead, including Baron Samadhi, reinforce this symbiotic relationship between the living and the spiritual realm. Baron Samadhi's enigmatic persona transcends religious boundaries, permeating literature, film, music, and fashion. From Ian Fleming's James Bond series to Haitian folk music, his influence is pervasive, embodying the allure of the mysterious and the supernatural. In the popular imagination, Baron Samadhi continues to captivate audiences worldwide, reminding us of the timeless fascination with the enigma of death and the afterlife. Comparatively, 
Baron Samadhi shares commonalities with other underworld deities like Hades and Miklantikutli, serving as guardians of the dead and bestowers of blessings upon the living. However, his distinct character and symbolism reflect the unique cultural context of Haitian Vodou, synthesizing African, European, and indigenous traditions into a multifaceted deity. Psychologically and sociologically, Baron Samadhi's mythology offers insights into humanity's perception of death and the afterlife, reflecting existential fears and cultural values. Through rituals and offerings, devotees establish reciprocal relationships with the Loa, seeking guidance and protection in exchange for reverence and respect. In essence, Baron Samadhi epitomizes the cyclical nature of existence, embodying the interconnectedness of life and death, the material and the spiritual. As a symbol of resilience and defiance, he inspires individuals to confront existential uncertainties and find meaning amidst the chaos of the human condition. Velas Velas stands out as a prominent figure, revered as the god of the underworld in Slavic mythology. Velas, with his enigmatic presence, weaves through tales of creation, life, and death, embodying the mysteries that lie beneath the surface of existence. Origins of Velas To comprehend the essence of Velas, one must delve into the origins of Slavic mythology itself. The Slavic peoples, whose cultural roots stretch across Eastern Europe, developed a rich tapestry of beliefs and deities over millennia. Much of what we know about Slavic mythology comes from oral traditions, folk tales, and later Christian writings, which often sought to suppress or assimilate pagan beliefs. Velas's origins are shrouded in the mists of time, intertwined with the primordial forces that shaped the universe. Some scholars trace his roots to the Proto-Indo-European religion, a precursor to many ancient belief systems across Europe and Asia. In this ancient pantheon, Velas may have been associated with concepts such as the earth, waters, and the underworld, embodying the unseen forces that govern the natural world. As Slavic culture evolved, Velas became increasingly anthropomorphized, taking on the form of a deity with distinct attributes and characteristics. His name itself may have derived from the Proto-Indo-European root WEL, meaning to rule or to be strong, reflecting his role as a powerful and influential figure in the pantheon. Velas in Slavic Mythology In Slavic mythology, Velas occupies a central position among the gods, serving as both a rival and ally to Purin, the god of thunder and lightning. This divine rivalry mirrors the eternal struggle between order and chaos, with Velas representing the primal forces of the underworld and Purin embodying the celestial powers of the heavens. Velas is often depicted as a complex figure, with attributes that encompass both benevolent and malevolent qualities. As the god of the underworld, he holds dominion over the realm of the dead, guiding souls on their journey into the afterlife. Yet, Velas is also associated with fertility, agriculture, and wealth, symbolizing the bounty of the earth and the mysteries of the harvest. The dual nature of Velas reflects the cyclical rhythms of nature, where life and death are intertwined in an eternal dance. In some myths, Velas is portrayed as a trickster figure, using his cunning and guile to outweet his adversaries and achieve his goals. In others, he is depicted as a wise and benevolent deity, offering guidance and protection to those who honor him. The Domain of Velas, the Underworld Central to Velas's mythology is his role as the ruler of the underworld, known as Nevia or Nav. This subterranean realm is envisioned as a vast and shadowy domain, where the spirits of the dead reside for eternity. Nevia is often depicted as a realm of darkness and decay, where Velas reigns supreme as the Lord of the Dead. Within the depths of Nevia, Velas presides over a host of supernatural beings, including demons, spirits, and ancestral guardians. These entities are said to inhabit the various realms of the underworld, each with its own unique characteristics and inhabitants. Among the most prominent of these realms is the Land of the Blessed, where the souls of heroes and virtuous individuals are said to dwell in eternal paradise. Nevia is also depicted as a realm of trials and tribulations, where souls must undergo various tests and challenges to prove their worthiness. Those who fail these trials are condemned to wander the underworld for eternity, 
while those who succeed are rewarded with eternal bliss in the land of the blessed. Depictions and Symbols of Veles In art and iconography, Veles is often depicted as a powerful and imposing figure, clad in armor and wielding a mighty weapon. He is typically portrayed with attributes that symbolize his dominion over the underworld, such as serpents, dragons, and other creatures of the depths. One of the most common symbols associated with Veles is the ram, which represents fertility, virility, and strength. In Slavic folklore, the ram is often depicted as a sacred animal, revered for its connection to the earth and its role in agricultural rituals. Veles is also associated with the bear, another powerful symbol of strength and protection, which embodies the wild and untamed forces of nature. In addition to animals, Veles is often depicted with symbols of wealth and abundance, such as horns of plenty, sheaves of grain, and golden treasures. These symbols reflect his role as a god of fertility and prosperity, who bestows blessings upon the land and its inhabitants. Veles in Mythological Narratives Throughout Slavic mythology, Veles appears in a variety of myths and legends, each highlighting different aspects of his character and role in the divine hierarchy. One of the most famous myths involving Veles is the tale of his rivalry with Purin, which is often depicted as a cosmic battle between the forces of light and darkness. According to myth, Veles coveted the beautiful goddess of fertility, Mokash, who was also the wife of Purin. In his jealousy and desire, Veles attempted to abduct Mokash and claim her as his own. This act of defiance sparked a fierce conflict between Veles and Purin, as the two gods clashed in a titanic struggle for supremacy. In some versions of the myth, Purin ultimately emerges victorious, defeating Veles and casting him down into the depths of the underworld. In others, Veles manages to evade Purin's wrath, retreating into the shadows to plot his revenge. Regardless of the outcome, the rivalry between Veles and Purin serves as a metaphor for the eternal struggle between order and chaos, light and darkness. Veles in Modern Culture Despite the passage of time and the spread of Christianity throughout Eastern Europe, the legacy of Veles continues to endure in modern culture. In countries such as Russia, Ukraine, and Poland, Veles remains a potent symbol of national identity and cultural heritage, revered as a guardian of Slavic traditions and folklore. In recent years, there has been a resurgence of interest in Slavic mythology, fueled by a growing fascination with ancient belief systems and pagan spirituality. This revival has led to a renewed appreciation for Veles and other Slavic gods, as people seek to reconnect with their ancestral roots and rediscover the wisdom of the past. Veles's influence can also be seen in popular culture, where he has inspired numerous works of art, literature, and music. From epic fantasy novels to heavy metal albums, Veles continues to captivate the imagination of artists and creators around the world, serving as a potent symbol of mystery, power, and transcendence. Erlik Erlik holds a significant place in Turkic mythology as the ruler of the realm of the dead and the antagonist to the forces of creation and life. This deity's complex nature and role in shaping the cosmos and human destiny provide insight into the cultural and spiritual beliefs of Turkic peoples. Origins of Erlik To understand Erlik's role as the god of the underworld, we must first explore his origins as depicted in Turkic and Mongolian mythology. Like many mythological figures, Erlik's backstory is shrouded in mystery and subject to variations across different cultures and time periods. However, Certain themes and motifs recur in various accounts, offering insights into his nature and significance. One prevalent myth portrays Ehrlich as a primordial being who existed before the creation of the world. In some versions, he is described as the first being to emerge from the cosmic egg, embodying the forces of chaos and darkness. As the universe took shape, Ehrlich found himself relegated to the depths of the underworld, where he became its ruler and master. Another common narrative attributes Ehrlich's existence to a divine conflict or cosmic struggle. According to this myth, Ehrlich was originally a subordinate deity who rebelled against the supreme god or creator figure. His defiance led to his banishment from the celestial realms, condemning him to rule over the realm of the dead for eternity. Regardless of the specific details, 
Ehrlich's origins are often intertwined with themes of rebellion, exile, and the struggle between order and chaos. As the god of the underworld, he embodies the darker aspects of existence, serving as a counterbalance to the forces of light and life. Attributes and Characteristics Ehrlich is typically depicted as a powerful and malevolent deity, endowed with various attributes and characteristics that distinguish him from other gods in the pantheon. While his appearance and demeanor may vary depending on the cultural context, certain traits are consistently associated with him across different mythological traditions. One of Ehrlich's defining attributes is his association with death, decay, and the afterlife. As the ruler of the underworld, he holds dominion over the souls of the deceased, determining their fate and dispensing justice according to his own inscrutable standards. In some legends, Ehrlich is depicted as a fearsome judge who weighs the deeds of the departed and assigns them to their rightful place in the afterlife. In addition to his role as a judge of the dead, Ehrlich is also portrayed as a trickster figure who delights in sowing chaos and confusion among mortals. He is often depicted as a cunning and deceitful being capable of assuming different guises and manipulating events to further his own sinister agenda. In many myths, Ehrlich is the antagonist who opposes the forces of good and righteousness, seeking to undermine the order established by the celestial gods. Despite his malevolent nature, Ehrlich is not without vulnerabilities and limitations. In some stories, he is depicted as being bound by cosmic laws or subject to the authority of higher deities, which serve as checks on his power. However, his cunning and resourcefulness allow him to circumvent these restrictions, making him a formidable adversary to both mortals and gods alike. Interactions with other deities Ehrlich's interactions with other deities play a crucial role in shaping the mythology of the Turkic and Mongolian pantheon. As a central figure in the cosmological narrative, he often finds himself entangled in conflicts and alliances with gods and spirits from both the celestial and terrestrial realms. These interactions shed light on Ehrlich's role as a cosmic antagonist and the tensions that exist within the divine hierarchy. One common motif in Turkic and Mongolian mythology is the struggle between Ehrlich and the supreme god or creator figure. Known by various names such as Tungri, Uljin, or Tungri Khan, this benevolent deity represents the forces of order, light, and creation. Ehrlich's rebellion against Tungri serves as a recurring theme in many myths, symbolizing the eternal conflict between good and evil. In addition to his conflicts with celestial deities, Ehrlich also interacts with a host of other supernatural beings, including spirits, demons, and ancestral guardians. These encounters often involve alliances or rivalries based on mutual interests or competing agendas. For example, Ehrlich may form alliances with malevolent spirits to oppose the efforts of benevolent gods, or he may seek to corrupt and manipulate ancestral spirits for his own purposes. Despite his antagonistic relationship with many other deities, Ehrlich is not without allies of his own. In some myths, he is depicted as the leader of a host of demonic minions who serve him faithfully in the underworld. These creatures, which range from fearsome monsters to mischievous imps, carry out Ehrlich's will and help enforce his dominion over the realm of the dead. Rituals and Worship The worship of Ehrlich and the veneration of ancestral spirits play a central role in the religious practices of Turkic and Mongolian cultures. Throughout history, various rituals and ceremonies have been conducted to honor Ehrlich and seek his favor, especially during times of death, illness, or other life-altering events. These rituals reflect the belief in the interconnectedness of the living and the dead, as well as the importance of maintaining harmony between the two realms. One common ritual associated with Ehrlich is the offering of sacrifices and libations to appease the spirits of the underworld. These offerings, which may include food, drink, or valuable objects, are presented to Ehrlich and other ancestral spirits as a sign of respect and devotion. By making these offerings, worshippers seek to gain the protection and assistance of the underworld deities, especially during times of crisis or uncertainty. Another important aspect of Ehrlich's worship is the performance of shamanic rituals and ceremonies. Shamans, who serve as intermediaries between the human and spirit worlds, play a crucial role in communicating with Ehrlich and other underworld deities on behalf of their communities. 
Through trance-induced states and visionary experiences, shamans seek to gain insight into the will of the spirits and receive guidance on matters of importance to their people. In addition to formal rituals and ceremonies, the veneration of Ehrlich also takes place through everyday practices and customs. For example, individuals may observe taboos and restrictions related to death and mourning, such as avoiding certain activities or behaviors out of respect for the deceased. Similarly, the construction of burial mounds and funerary monuments serves as a tangible expression of reverence for the ancestors and their journey into the afterlife. Cultural Significance Ehrlich's role as the god of the underworld holds profound cultural significance for Turkic and Mongolian societies, shaping their beliefs, values, and worldview in profound ways. As a figure of myth and legend, he embodies the collective fears, hopes, and aspirations of the people who worshipped him, providing a framework for understanding the mysteries of life and death. One of the key themes associated with Ehrlich is the concept of duality and the interconnectedness of opposites. As the god of the underworld, he represents the shadow side of existence, embodying darkness, chaos, and entropy. However, he is also intimately linked to the cycles of creation and destruction, serving as a necessary counterbalance to the forces of life and light. Ehrlich's mythology also reflects the cultural values and social dynamics of Turkic and Mongolian societies. His role as a trickster figure and cosmic antagonist highlights the importance of cunning, resourcefulness, and resilience in the face of adversity. Likewise, his interactions with other deities underscore the complex interplay between power, authority, and hierarchy within the divine realm. Furthermore, Ehrlich's worship provides a sense of continuity and connection to the past, reinforcing the bond between the living and the dead. By honoring the ancestors and seeking their guidance and protection, worshipers affirm their place within the larger cosmic order and acknowledge the legacy of those who came before them. Thank you for watching this episode. See you in episode 3 bye bye.